here dogs implies dogs barking so what dogs implies is barking so it's not noun here so whenever there is has have had before filler you have to put third form of the verb over there if a fill up after a comma might be so you have to put a verb with ing over there it's very obvious many people they struggle here they just put second form sometime noun first this is the master grammar rule in pt there will always be this thing doesn't matter you are doing your essay summarize written text summarize spoken text write from dictation listening fill in the blanks there can also rose is a member of that group rose is, rose is a member of that club and rose is a member of that gang so there is a positive thing there is a neutral thing and there is a negative combination make a good combination of two words heavy rain we can't say strong rain so she is cooking and serving the food cooking serving both side with ing ing she cooks and serves the food both side present definite tense as with the verb we are providing online one to one pte coaching with authentic practice material After enrolling in our PTE courses, you will get continuous material updates for next 6 months. For more information, visit our website careercoves.com or WhatsApp us on given numbers. Hi guys, this is Ajit Kaur from Career Coves. So today um I'm going to make a video regarding the PTE grammar rules which can be very helpful to get 90 each. it will be very helpful in other parts of the pt exam such as in listening grammar in writing as well so just be careful and listen it carefully and follow up this point which can be very helpful for you so if you see on the screen um i'm going to discuss about the very first rule that is regarding noun so everyone should be um very careful about like what's happening in the sentence where is the noun and verb that can solve the problem easily in reading section because mostly people they struggle in reading writing and reading fill in the blanks because they are not aware about where what is noun verb at verb adjective so these sort of things you have to be careful about because it can make things easier for you it's not about about the vocabulary all the time sometimes grammar can also help you so uh, the knowledge of vocab is also uh, very important but i think if you have the grammar knowledge then it can also be very useful for you so the very first thing is the noun so if you see on the screen what is noun noun is the name of any person anything any concept or any place that is known as noun and you can also say anything that is addressing who or what of a sentence is known as a noun so most of the sentence have one noun or pronoun at least one so they can be more than that they can be uh, nouns are often but not always so it is always preceded by article such as a and the so whenever you say any articles that is always followed up by um a noun or it, an another determiner such as an adjective so it is usually a single word but not always there can be a uh, plural word as well like more than one thing so that can also be a noun so noun noun can be of multiple types they can be proper noun common collective abstract countable and uncountable and there are some other nouns it's not like people they always see oh this is not a thing why this is considered as a noun but there are many other words that ends with alphabet such as age for example language postage ants ants a e r o r hood i s m i s t i t y t y i t u d e attitude latitude something like that meant commitment government something like that n e w s s h i p t i o n s i o n they are the nouns so which which are like ending with these alphabets are also known as nouns so that can be um uh, you have to be very careful whenever you just see these sort of words this can be considered as a noun apart from that it is it will be very clear for you if you just have a look on the screen the example has been mentioned for example critics also took it upon themselves to recount the plots of both ballet when it premieres and operas in their reviews of premieres so did the publisher of somnia albums which also featured pictures of famous stars and of scenes from favorite ballet when it premieres and operas so famous perform perf famous is an adjective here followed up by a noun performers that is in a plural form so that is a noun here fact even their reviews of premieres their reviews there is a pronoun here 
followed up by noun reviews that is like implies by them so that is always followed up by a noun so performers and reviews are considered as a noun here so be careful it is very easy to find a noun so always followed up by articles followed up by pronouns they can be adjective as well as well before noun so just be careful about that the next topic is the verb what is verb anything in the world which we can do or which we can perform or it can be indicated as a physical action it can be internal or external as well for example driving cooking walking these are the external verbs whatever is in our mental or like whatever psychologically we think that is what is inside is known as a mental action that is an internal verb or a state of being for example exists so every sentence have one verb and um, uh, in pte most of the fill ups have verbs so they can be uh, the verbs can always be used along with a noun or pronoun to describe what exactly the noun and pronoun is doing there are six basic form of the verbs so the very first form is the base form that is known as children play in the field so play is a base form here this is the verb there is infinitive verb as well like tell them not to play so here tell and play so that can be considered as an infinitive verb there is past tense such as they played football yesterday so played that has already been done or happened past participle i have eaten a burger so this is this is the past past participle verb and uh, you can see the next one is present participle that is i saw them playing with him today so the verbs like you know that describe the action of the noun in the present or past tense that is considered as a past participle and present participle also i saw them playing with him today so it is just happened today but like before me so past is already done so gerund is also very important some student they ask me how can there be a verb in the first state of the sentence like swimming eating cooking so why it is in the first form if any gerund is like if there is any sentence which is um, um, like in a continued in continuous form and uh, there is no, like there is they are not using any uh, any uh, connectors so if there is no connectors in a complex sentence and it is in a continuous form and there is one full stop at the end only they are using comma so most probably in the beginning of like after comma they will uh, there is a chance that there will be a verb with ing over there so swimming is at the place of noun so that is known as gerund this is very obvious i have seen many time in the exam uh whenever there is a fill up in the beginning of the sentence after full stop so if there is options like that so go with the verb with ing over there so for example the electrons that orbit closest to the nucleus are strongly attracted attracted is the second form of the verb here followed up by adverb strongly and there is an uh, helping verb as well that is are so are strongly attracted attracted is a verb there is another verb can be forced out of their orbit so can be so models with be be if you see any models in the exam like can be could be should be would be so that is always followed up by the third form of the verb that is forced that is the third form of the verb next one is active voice and passive voice so what is active and passive voice because sometimes students have a confusion that how can there be a third form of the verb is am are or was were in with these helping verbs how can they put the third form of the verb so according to the position of the subject and objects in a sentence the voice of the verb can be determined for example the active voice can be a sentence in which the subject does the action is called active voice but like if it is in an indirect way like the object is doing something or the direct object is switched to make it to the subject is called passive voice the example has been mentioned on the screen like the active voice is the doctor check the patient so the doctor have performed something on the patient now if we say in indirect way in the passive voice we will say the patient was checked by the doctor so was is there why because it is the past indefinite tense because there is check second form of the verb in the active voice so that is there there is there can be use of was and were so was is because there is a patient singular form so was will be there third form of the verb checked will be there so this is the active passive voice okay 
so the next topic is adverb so adverb is very important in pte so usually what is adverb adverb is a word that modifies a verb or you can say the name itself says add verb so it is adding value to verb so it is describing verbs more properly so for example he sings loudly he sings is just a simple sentence but if you just adding word loudly with the verb so it is more clear it is adding value either he's uh, like singing loud or at a low volume or something slowly or something like that so it is like making clarity over there adjective is the quality of anything for example tall fair black hard soft so these are the qualities so another adverb is ended too quickly so, or even a whole sentence, for example, fortunately, I had brought an umbrella. So, here you can see like how they have used it. So, adverb often ends with ly, but sometimes they look the same as their adjective counterpart. They, they just exactly look like, um, you know, the same how the adjective uh, is. So, adjective usually describe an action in terms of how, when, where, and to what extent it occurred. So adverb is very popular. So you can see in the example, it is a tool and like any tool, it can offer great advantages, but it can also cause problem. So just, okay. So when being used improperly, so it's not compulsory that your adverb will always be before, uh, before your verb. It can be after verb as well. So used improperly. So improperly is an verb. So that comes after verb. So it can be before verb or it can be after verb so it depends on the sentence so the next thing is apostrophe so um might be you have seen in many at many places if there is a apostrophe s for example the grammatical rule that states that after an apostrophe a noun should be followed up so this real rule is often related to possessive forms in english so for example mary's book so book is a noun here Jones car. Car is a noun here. There's a post of yes, you can see. However, there are other exceptions as well in this um, uh, rule. So uh, sometimes it implies on, for example, the dogs barking walk me up here. Dogs implies dogs barking. So what dogs implies is barking. So it's not noun here. Teachers instructions were clear here. Teachers implies teachers in instructions. So there can be some exceptions. The next rule is use of has, have, had. So it has been noticed that in exam, whenever you see there is a fill up and before fill up, they have given you has, have, had. So whenever there is has, have, had before fill up, you have to put third form of the verb over there. So has or have, they are the part of present perfect tense. So it means something already happened. So for example, he has eaten lunch. Eaten is the third form of the verb. And if you see past perfect is always included had. So this is an auxiliary verb. In the past perfect tense, it is followed up by the past participle form of the main verb. Example, she had finished her homework. So if there is a had before filler, try to find third form of the verb over there. So these forms are used to indicate action that have been completed in relation to a certain point on time. So this is related to the time. The third form of the verb is essentially the past participle form which is used in these tenses. So be careful whenever you see any of them, try to put the third form of the verb after that. So you can see in the example, plastic has dashed the way we manufacture, package, transport and use different products ranging from groceries to cosmetics and vaccines. Transformed is a third form of the verb. So there will be a fill up after has, you have to find the third form of the verb. Sometimes people get confused over oh, the, all the uh, uh, options they have mentioned is in the third form. So what to do? So in that case, I will say you should have the knowledge of vocab in that case. So according to that situation, which vocab, uh, like what word is more suitable, you have to put it that one. Just practice vocabulary on the daily basis. The only way to improve your vocabulary is um, you should have the interest to know the meaning of new words. That is the only way to improve your okay. vocabulary. It's not just for PT, but I think uh, uh, for your overall uh, English language can be improved by just uh, improving your vocabulary. The next thing is sometimes has, have, and had can comes with the, the ing, the word with ing and the third form of the verb. 
So the uses of has been, had been with both the ing form are also known as the present participle. And the third form of the verb can be there that is considered as a past participle of the verb. Let's break down the uses. Has been with ing form. So this structure is used in the present perfect continuous tense. It means the action that started in the past. So something has been started in the past, continued in the present, and might still be ongoing. So people, what they see is if there is like been, so they just go with ing. They don't see what is happening. Sometimes there can be third form of the verb after that. But you have to analyze. Okay, something started before. And that is continued into the present and might be ongoing in the future. So it is formed by using has been followed up by ing form of the verb. For example, she has been studying for three hours. She has been in the past studying for three hours. Okay. So this is the example of how has been can come with the verb with ing. So had been is the past perfect continuous tense. So it is indicate an action that was ongoing in the past. Up to specific point in time in the past, it's formed by using had been followed up by ing form of the verb. For example, they had been playing tennis before it started raining. So you can see it is indicating an action that was ongoing in the past, had been playing up to specific point in the time before it started raining. So it is a specific point in time in the past. So raining is started. Next thing is has been with the third form of the verb. So this structure is used in the present perfect passive tense. It indicates an action that was performed on the subject. So any action that was performed on the subject. For example, the book has been read. So the they are indicating an action that was performed on the subject. That the book was read. So book is an subject. Has relevance to the present. It is formed by using has been followed by third form of the verb that is past participle. So the book has been read by many students. So there can be a third form of the verb with had been as well. This structure is used in the past perfect passive tense. It indicates an action that was completed in the past before another past action. It's formed by using had been followed by third form of the verb that is known as past participle form of the verb. Example is by the time I arrived, the cake had been eaten. So what is it? Uh, it indicating here that the action that was completed in the past by the time I arrived, that is action that, that has been completed, that he arrived, before another past action, the cake had been eaten. So that thing has been happened before, okay? Because that thing has happened. He arrived later, but the cake had been eaten already. So it is formed by using had been followed up by the third form of the verb that is past participle form of the verb so this is this should be very clear to you there is difference you have to analyze the sentence what is happening in the past or present analyze those situations accordingly you have to put third form of the verb or the verb with ing so in summary has been and had been all used with both ing form and the third form of the verbs but their uses depends on the tense and whether you are forming active or passive sentences so there can be active passive voices as well and i and i told you like in the passive voice there should always be third form of the verb the next thing is use the third form of the verb that is the part of passive voice as i discussed already as well so just reminding you so was what is am are comes with the third form of the verb that is a passive voice always for example the monkey eats mangoes mangoes were eaten by monkey so that the action is like followed up by the object mangoes were eaten by the monkey Next is about the verb with ing in continuous sentences. So the use of the verb ing. So what is it? It is a present participle with constructing sentences in continuous tenses. So continuous tenses are those like which is going on. So they are progressive sentences. They are, they are known as progressive tenses that indicate action that are ongoing in progress or temporarily happening. And uh, where there is no connectors and it is a complex sentence. The ing form of the verb is used in these sentences. So um full stop should be at the end but there is no connectors in between it's a complex progressive tense so in between there can be um if a fill up after comma might be so you have to put a verb with ing over there it's very obvious many people they struggle here they just put second form sometime noun first form second form so it should not be that there so it should be a verb with ing over there. This is the part of continuous sentence. So whenever you see like that, for example, John is working hard, comma, adding to this, he has another things to do. 
So adding is a verb with ing. It is a progressive tense. So we have to put a verb with ing after comma. Remember this point. Okay. The next very important, the most important rule. And I have seen even like many students, like sometimes I practice with them. They just face the issue with this uh, rule. This is the master grammar rule in PT. There will always be this thing. Doesn't matter you are doing your essay, summarized written text, summarized spoken text, write from dictation, listening, fill in the blanks. There can be something like that. What is it? Present indefinite tense. So you have to add S to the verb when the subject is a singular third person pronoun. He, she, it. So in the present indefinite tense, like whenever you use any singular noun, for example, subject, he, she, or it, it should be followed up by a verb with S, E, S behind it. For example, he eats breakfast every morning. He is a singular. So eats is a verb with S. She reads. If I say they eat, I can't say they eats. That is wrong. Because that is in the plural form. They eat. He eats. She reads or reads. And if you see uh, people, people eat, not people eats. Because that is in the plural form. Be careful about this rule. It can be very helpful for you in many areas of PD. For example, lava is an incredibly hot substance that forms when magma from the earth's depth rises to the surface and erupts through a volcano. Erupts. Erupt is the first form of the verb because it is earth's depth rises to the surface. Rises, you can also say they are using a CS behind the verb. So earth's depth rises to the surface and erupts through a volcano. So erupts is the verb with S-E-S behind it. Next one is articles. This is very important. Important articles are A and the, and the most important article in PT is N. So these are the small words used before noun to indicate whether the noun refers to something specific or general. If it is specific, definitely it will come with the, and the listener or the reader is already familiar with it, or when there is only one of that particular noun. Example, the cat is on the roof. So referring to a specific cat that both the speaker and listener know about it. If both the person, they are aware about the, uh, about the particular subject, then we put the over there. What is indefinite article is A and N, and A is used, uh, like uh, A is used before words that begin with consonant sounds. And is used before the word that we can with vowel sound. So any word that's starting with A, E, I, O, U, that will definitely will come with an. Leftover, all the words come with a. So these article introduce a noun in a general or non-specific way. Example, I saw a dog in the park, a dog. So this is referring to any dog, not a specific one. So uh, N is the most popular um, article in the exam. So anything that uh, starts with A, E, I, O, U, definitely it's going to come with an. So there will be a fill up after N. So you have to find that word that is starting with vowels or any word even um, um i will discuss about it as well so if there is no article for example sometimes no article is needed especially when referring to plural non-countable nouns in a general sense example dogs are loyal animals so referring to dogs in general so we don't need to say the dog dogs is a general thing here so remember the choice of article depends on the context and specific nouns you are referring to. Additionally, there are some specific cases and rules related to articles such as using the with unique objects. So we use the with some unique things. Unique is what? The sun. There's only one sun. So there is unique. No one is like him. So the moon. Abstract nouns. Specific places like example, the park and more. So these are the words that comes with the, uh, the because sometimes people they ask, they put like Anywhere they put the. So you have to be careful about that. The should be there with particular things only, with specific things and uh, with some unique things with some specific nouns. For example, you can see here, there's an example. Polar bears are a powerful symbol of the strength and endurance of the Arctic. Their Latin names, Usus maritimus, means sea bear. It's an apt name for this majestic species. So, and so a p t so and comes before um like fill up so there should be any word that starts with vowel here the next one is parallel structure with nouns and verbs so this is very important point to know so what is it it is like use of same noun and verb on both side of and so if they have given you two fill up before and after and you have to put same form of noun and verb on both sides 
So a specific sentence structure with the same form of noun and verb are used on both sides of and structure is known as parallelism or parallel structure. It is a grammatical construction in which two or more elements in a sentence are similar in structure form or length. What is it? For example, if I say she likes reading books and writing poems and is in between. So they are mentioning reading books and writing poems. There is verb with ing or there is a noun with ses behind it in the plural form. If I give another example, for example, they have said um, she is dash and dash food. So she is cooking and serving the food. Cooking, serving, both side with ing, ing. She cooks and serves the food. Both side present definite tense, s with the verb. It should be same on both sides. And with the singular comes with the singular and the plural with come with the plural, like books and points, books and pens. And even if there is similar form of a word, like similar form of word, like if I say um, she, um, she is loving and caring. So loving and caring, both positive form. So I can't say loving and aggressive, loving and unreliable. So I can't say that because they are in opposite form. If there is or word in between to fill up, then you can put opposite things. But if there is and, you have to put similar form of things on the both side. So in this sentence, both sides of and follow the same structure with the verb and a noun used in the same form. So parallelism can make sentences clear, more balanced and easier to understand. So it's commonly used in writing and speech to create a rhythm and emphasize the relationship between I and us. So please make sure, analyze if there is and, and they have given you fill up. It's not compulsory. The filler will be on both sides. They can be filled up after or before. You have to analyze it and you have to find out what word or what verb is suitable to put over there, either noun or verb or anything. So you can see in the example, over time, the traits that enable species to survive and reproduce will become more frequent in the population. Population will evolve. So survive and reproduce. Re reproduce is the first form of the verb. So survive and reproduce. They both are the same form of first form of the verb. So they are in the same form. So that's why and is there. So fill up is after and. So all this, this is very obvious. They should be first form of the verb. Next one is collocation. There is many collocations. Even PT have uh, uploaded um, a big list for this on online. But uh, it's very hard to memorize all of them. But I think whatever is coming in front of you, just keep in mind. So collocations are the combination of that word that tend to occur together frequently in a, a natural and uh, idiom, idiomatic way in a particular language. So collocations can involve words, noun, adjectives, and verb, and other parts of the speech. Here are some examples you can see. What is strong collocation? Make a decision. Weak is take a decision. This is very less, and it's not. It's unnatural. So we always make a decision. Strong heavy rain is make a good combination of two words. Heavy rain. We can't say strong rain. Fast asleep, not quick, quick asleep. Okay, so these are the words that always come together. Just keep in mind whatever you um, just doing. Uh, those words can be you know memorized. So that that is another thing. Continuation. So continuation means the meaning behind words. Sometimes when ask me, all the words have the same meaning in reading, writing, filling the blanks. So what they have to do? So here you should have the knowledge of a camp. For example, they, there are three type of uh, uh, continuations here, positive continuation, neutral, and negative continuation. So take a look at these examples. Rose is a member of that group. Rose, Rose is a member of that club. And Rose is a member of that gang. So there is a positive thing. There is a neutral thing. And there is a negative continuation as well. So group, club, and gang are all referred to same people. Like there is a group of people who come together for a specific purposes. However, group has a neutral continuation. It's a very neutral, nat natural thing. Gang is a negative thing. And the club has a more positive intonation. It sends a sense to it. So you have to analyze like what word ac according to that situation get fitted there. So try to go with that only, which is suitable for that one. So that's all. Thank you so much. We'll see you in next video. Thanks for watching this video. For more updates by Career Coves, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.